It's great to know that amidst the crazy year 2020 has been, summer 2020 is looking to be filled with great content for gamers with the likes of Last of Us Part 2 on the horizon and as well as Ghost of Tsushima to follow. Along with Ghost of Tsushima's impressive state of play showing, we've gotten some more details about the Feudal Japan open world game that's worth knowing before we get hands on with the game. What's going on guys, it's your boy TKD123 here back here on PlayStation Stories and we are going to go over all the new details and info that we got about Ghost of Tsushima. First off here, this detail is a little bit I feel like under talked about but I think is a huge deal in terms of the open world and the main means of traversal. So games that I love are games that let you ride a horse. I know that is a very odd thing to just, you know, single out, but I love the mount in Horizon Zero Dawn, even though that's not technically a horse, but it kind of is a horse. I love the Red Dead Redemption 2 horse where it's a little bit more of a serious type of simulation type of horse where you have to, you know, dust off as dust. Even though that's not the most fun mechanic in the world, I did think it was really, really cool to have my horse, you know, have to feed it, have to nurture it, name it, different stuff like that. Like, be just an overall, like, close to, you know, a real life, you know, animal that you are taking care of. As well as I love the horse mechanics, like in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, where it is just, you know, you can, uh, you know, switch out with skins and everything. But if the horse dies, it's not like it's the end of the world, a new one will just come back into your game. And it's just like a very arcadey type of horse. But I love horses in open worlds. I think they offer a really, really the cool way to traverse the world and i don't know this may be just me but i just think it's just such a fun mechanic in any open world game to get on the horse and just ride around the open world and so of course i was ecstatic when we saw that horse riding on the e3 gameplay of ghost of tsushima it was a great thing to see definitely loved it to be confirmed right there in that gameplay however we did get some clarification from an interview with us gamer talking to the creative director of the game jason connell where they were asking a little bit more about the horse and different things of that nature so we did get a few tidbits of the horse number one just to know off here Jin's horse in ghost of tsushima is the name of the horse and i don't think you can change it which i'm completely fine with i even you know would love to see how it would go down like narrative wise and story wise you know to have a horse uh that that is a bit more of like a primary character like he is a part of the story and not just a horse that you use as a player you know what i'm saying so it's really cool to get a horse that is not really for the player but it's because it is Jin's horse it is the main character's horse you know what i'm saying like nobu is the horse i like that a lot but he says here quote your horse is not gonna die it can get scared and run away but the game isn't going to permanently take nobu away from the player and while we will touch on that aspect in a little bit here he does go on to say in the interview that of course we have seen throughout the say the play that Jin will rely on a lot of animals to aid him in the open world that being helping him to find people in need, find hidden secrets or undiscovered locations or raw materials for crafting and different stuff like that. And so the way they got this mantra of not having Nobu be hurt or be killed or whatever is from the actor portraying Jin in the game, which I will butcher his name right here, but I'm going to try my hardest to read this right. Daisuke Suji, I think is how you pronounce it. I think, again, links down below in the description. Uh, I'm sorry, okay? Like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But he says here, quote our actor has a nice sweet sensibility to him he cares about animals and people and it comes through in his performance so at least we got a little conversation here and a little bit of insight that the horse type if you will in terms of like i said before if it's gonna be more of like an arcadey horse or a very realistic horse it looks like it's gonna be weighing towards the side of arcadey where you know your horse is not gonna die i don't know if he meant like it's not gonna die in the narrative or that maybe like it can die from the players controlling practice because i mean like there was a bunch of really high cliffs and you know different different segments where you can uh, traverse and climb and stuff like that and if you're gonna have the ability to i guess hopefully i mean i don't know maybe summon nobu whenever you want wherever you're at in the game that means that you can take the horse up to those high places and what if you know we do the open world thing where we try and jump off the cliff on the horse like how is that gonna work i know in assassin's creed odyssey it's at a certain height 
height and so if you're at a super high elevation when you get to the ground you won't take any damage but the horse will die and it takes like 30 seconds for the game to generate you a new horse who knows if that's going to be what they're talking about here or maybe he could be saying that hey the horse is not going to die in the narrative who knows i do think that's going to be an interesting way that they're going to have to address that if the horse is unkillable like i can't think of a game where uh you know that just works out and since they're doubling down on like the realism i think that could definitely be a contention where it could take it out of it maybe i'm thinking too deep into this it's just a horse you know what i'm saying but uh i don't know are they gonna use invisible walls is nobu gonna miraculously live after a high falls from grace we will have to see next up here in terms of how the gameplay looked in combat it did look a little bit like this game is going to require a lot of patience and skill to master the overall techniques and know the enemy's next move or at least try to intend and anticipate their next move similar to games that have similar combat aspects to like a Sekiro or a Fallen Order or Bloodborne or a Souls game I'm not saying that Ghost of Tsushima is going to be those games directly because I know those games are definitely uh, hardcore and if you guys are friends of the channel you guys know that you know those aren't really my games that i tend to enjoy but i do see some of the combat seeping into that genre of games that you know souls bloodborne fall in order sekiro type of vibe to it however in an interview with director nate fox on the game on playstation blog we do get some answers in terms of that hard mode difficulty and how the game is going to progress in terms of an easy mode to normal to hard mode and he says here quote no matter which the Difficulty players choose we never increase the health of enemies this is to maintain the lethality of the katana our combat is all about the player's skill and he does go on to say here quote on hard the game is fair but very challenging mongols are more aggressive and players must be precise to pull off extraordinary moves okay this straight up i think is the best way to go about this and it's for multiple reasons number one i think that because they are again trying to double down on the realism in this world and of course when i say that i know that there are going to be definite aspects of this game that are definitely on a gameplay you know like i know there's going to be game mechanics in this and it is a game at heart but i do see that they are really trying to double down and turn some of those game mechanics that would have been a very much like oh like for example the waypoint you know what i'm saying like that could have easily just been an arrow or been like a physical like transparent logo on the screen to get you to where you have to go but they're using the winds for that and they're having it be melted into the overall world so i think them doing that is really just telling how they are trying to double down on the you know lore and the era that they're in and so with that being said having enemies at a higher difficulty be essentially like you know damage sponges would definitely take you out of that realism and could definitely you know hurt that overall mantra of them trying to be in the world as you're playing the game so i definitely like it from that aspect but also i love it because i know those hardcore players love that that you know thrill of really getting down an enemy's technique and really using it to their disadvantage and you using it to your advantage i know a lot of players love that type of tactile feeling where they know that they can beat this boss doing x y and z and it works and they have a method to it and i think that you know having the enemies on higher difficulties be tougher to do that with and just require that much precision and that much concentration i think it'll make those players really happy at the end of the day so overall i think this is a great way to do a hard mode i would have hated to see them just up the you know health of every enemy just like that i think this is a very very smart way to do it and i think it's gonna you know allow those players that really want to be skillful at this game to take pride in their skills with that hard mode being where the mongols are more aggressive and they'll have to be more precise to be able to defeat said enemies now the last thing here is that a few weeks ago if you guys were not subbed to the channel which you definitely should be subbed to this channel uh i did a very very in-depth breakdown on the state of play focusing on ghost of tsushima and we got like i think it was something like 75 facts about the game that was not explicitly said in the video and i did a very very in-depth analysis on this game check it out on the channel if you guys haven't seen it but there was one thing that kept bothering me throughout the entire time i was doing the breakdown that i could not get a grasp on what those orbs were doing on the bottom of the screen like i could not figure it out i looked time and time again throughout the state of play i could not figure it out right 
but in a new q a over on the playstation blog i believe the same one that nate fox said where he talked about the hard mode we finally got the explanation for these orbs guys it's lit let's go into it so they are called resolve orbs and what it is said to do is that the circles represent Jin's resolve and are built by succeeding in battle there are two ways you will be able to make use of this resolve bar you can either use it to heal up or consume some of the circles to pull off special combat moves it's sure to add a small tactical wrinkle while you're fighting the mongols so at least in my breakdown video i wasn't completely wrong about my guess i knew that they were increasing whenever Jin got a kill so they would like you know have these like yellow little like particles that would come in from the middle of the screen over to the bar that would fill a little bit of each orb and so i just never knew like what they were for i assumed that it was for some special moves and it looks like that is the case but you can also use it to heal up which i think is such a neat idea because if you guys remember spider-man ps4 it's essentially that system it's the same system that spider-man has where there is a bar and you you know fill it up as you do better in a combat scenario and you can either use that bar status to heal yourself if you need it or you can use it to pull off one of those insane special moves in the game it's the exact same system and i think it's a great system i think it really does you know give you the ability to have a little bit of kind of a given trade in terms of like all right like do you want to heal yourself or do you want to deal more damage to the enemies right now and what is the best time for that what's the best time to heal what's the best time to deal a massive blow on an attack i think this could offer some really really cool like in the moment decision making within ghost of tsushima that is going to be super super satisfying i can't wait i'm really glad that we finally got it all ironed out as to what those orbs are they are resolve orbs and you can use them to either pull off a very very insane powerful move or to heal yourself so definitely let me know what you can see in the comments below what are you guys thoughts on the horse and the hard mode as well as the resolve or was finally getting clarification on all those things let me know your thoughts down in the comments down below and make sure also while you are done to check our description where you can find our twitter our discord as well as our anchor link to listen to our long form content and podcast format right, that of course being road to part two and another road to series coming very very shortly that is very tied to this video just gonna leave it at that and make sure also while you're down there we have a black lives matter link still down there in the description if you'd like to donate to the cause once again black lives matter down below in the description to donate and once again if you got an issue with that i don't care <laughs> and uh, that is all i got for today guys like if you enjoyed it as well stay subscribe to place in stores to keep up with the latest and greatest in playstation thank you for watching and as always greatness awaits mm -hmm.